Ukraine expects the Russian offensive to intensify in the coming weeks and military officials, soldiers and analysts view the next few months as a critical stage in the war. Moscow has stepped up attacks in recent months and Ukrainian officials have admitted their defenses are crumbling, the Financial Times reports. Kiev expects the offensive to gather momentum and a Ukrainian army spokesman told the Financial Times that more medical personnel were being sent to the Eastern Front ahead of heavy fighting in the coming days and weeks, particularly in the South and East, the article said. The commander of an artillery unit near Kurakovo, where the fighting is most intense, told the Financial Times that Russian troops were attacking from three sides. He said his unit was ready to retreat, but we have not yet received orders from above. At the same time, according to estimates by the military think tank CDS, by December, the front line will probably shift 30 to 35 kilometers to the west from its current position. The biggest problem for Ukraine remains a shortage of personnel, especially infantry commanders, analysts say. The average age in the various brigades is already over 40, and there don't seem to be enough reinforcements arriving at the front, said Franz Stefan Gadi, a military analyst and research fellow at the International Institute for Strategic Studies in London. Ukraine plans to call up an additional 160,000 troops between November and February, which the National Security and Defense Council says would fill the military units by about 85% of what is needed. However, military experts and Ukrainian officials are skeptical about whether that goal can be achieved, saying it is more realistic to call up to 100,000 troops. They say this will fill about half the manpower shortfall, which would still be an improvement as some units are currently at about a third of their required strength, the Financial Times writes. At the same time, several Ukrainian commanders and soldiers said efforts to recruit more men into the army were being hampered by indefinite military service. Many guys now perceive mobilization as a death sentence, says one of the servicemen who joined the army in the spring of 2022 and has not taken a break since then. At the same time as two unit commanders on the Eastern Front told the publication they have to send qualified personnel, including doctors, to the infantry. War sometimes demands such things, said one commander. I've sent my cooks into the trenches before. North Korean fighters who have come to Russia to fight in Ukraine have been called mercenaries, cannon fodder and second-class citizens. But former North Korean soldiers and other military experts say many are willing to die because it is their chance to escape the grim conditions at home. As the Wall Street Journal writes, due to the specifics of their upbringing, they can demonstrate extremely high motivation in battle, even when fighting far from home and for an unfamiliar cause. According to former North Korean soldiers, almost all the fighters sent to Russia have a similar motivation. They are taught from an early age that they must sacrifice everything for the supreme leader without a moment's hesitation. The deployment of troops will be seen as the opportunity of a lifetime to bring money and glory to the Kim Jong-un regime. Those who die become heroes, those who survive return as heroes, the publication notes. As the Wall Street Journal writes, even the best North Korean troops lack modern equipment and resources. As David Maxwell, a retired U.S. Army Special Forces Colonel, says, many North Korean soldiers, even Special Forces, spend most of their time on farming or construction work. North Korean Special Forces training produces highly disciplined soldiers with high loyalty, often willing to take extreme risks with limited equipment. In the North Korean Army, however, the Special Forces occupy a special place. They are better fed than other units and undergo more intensive training in infiltration, destruction of infrastructure and assassination. State television showed footage of soldiers training, smashing light bulbs with their bare hands or bending metal rods. The DPRK claimed that each Special Forces soldier was equivalent to 100 enemy soldiers. At the same time as former DPRK Special Forces soldier Lee Hyun Seung says, during training it was mandatory to attend daily ideological training classes where slogans about the readiness to die for the supreme leader were repeated. They may be sacrificed without achieving much in the war, but they will not dare to question the leader's order to go to Russia, Lee says. According to Bang Jong-kwan, a former major general in the South Korean army, due to the language barrier and unfamiliarity 
With the terrain, the potential role of DPRK soldiers in Russia is limited to infantry. They will suffer heavy losses because it is unlikely that Russia will provide them with modern equipment or intelligence, Bang said. At the same time, former North Korean military officials say many soldiers will find the risk worth it because a foreign assignment raises their status in the country, giving them access to prestigious positions. It has recently become known that Pyongyang has sent several thousand of its troops to the Russian Federation. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky reported that there are already 11,000 North Korean troops in the Kursk region and they have already suffered losses. At the same time, according to military expert Alexander Kovalenko, Russia does not fully understand how to effectively use the DPRK military at the front. He noted that the key problem is the interaction between this contingent and the Russian forces. The enemy's record October losses, almost 42,000 soldiers or 1,350 on average per day, are explained exclusively by the increase in the number of Russian attacks in combination with the traditional tactics of meat assaults. And this is most likely not the last such record of the occupiers. This opinion was expressed today, November the 11th, on the air of the Freedom TV channel by military analyst Alexei Getman. They continue to carry out attacks regardless of the number of casualties. We call it meat assaults. The number of attacks has increased. The number of casualties has increased. The guest of the broadcast comments. Speaking about the structure of losses, he notes that such tactics of the Russians leave equally little chance of survival for both experienced soldiers and fresh reinforcements. Depending on which unit received the command to storm and what the relationships are between the soldiers, servicemen and mid-level commanders. We have heard such news that sometimes they send almost specifically to the slaughter. When professional soldiers attack, already with combat experience, they are better oriented, can move more correctly, cover themselves more correctly. This also does not significantly affect such tactics. If there were another, more, let's say, modern tactics of conducting military operations, then their advance would be more significant and the losses would be less. But they are unlikely to change anything, the military analyst believes. He recalled the battles for the city of Bakhmut in the Donetsk region when, for every 48 centimeters of advance, there was one dead or wounded Russian and stated that the enemy is literally paving his path with its own corpses. And now the Russians are trying to seize as much Ukrainian territory as possible in anticipation of a possible freeze on the front line. Therefore, Getman predicts that the Russian army will break its October loss record. The weather conditions are already a little more difficult for the Russians, and they have exhausted what they prepared for this offensive operation, which began in April to May of this year. Therefore, I think they will strengthen quantitatively. This is not very good for us. We also suffer losses, and it is not so easy to repel these massive attacks. The guest of the broadcast added, Alexei Getman also noted that the losses, no matter how record-breaking they were, and no matter how shocking they were to the civilized world, remain acceptable for the Russian Federation.